to today's daily draw. We're going to do some balloons today. Now, for the senior draw, I designed something that's just a little bit more complicated, but the key really to this one, to making it your own, is to create your own design, to have your own colours, to really just let go creatively and, and create your balloons for you. Okay, so we've adapted this slightly um, from the junior daily draw, just to make it a little bit more difficult. We're gonna have slightly different shaped balloons and we're gonna have three. So I think it's always best to start by plotting out where everything is gonna go here before you start. I'm gonna go about there for the big one. And that leaves me plenty of room here for the second one and here for the third one. So. Thinking about getting that little line down there will give me something to aim for. Now, this shape is more like a, it's almost like a light bulb shape rather than the circle we've done that we did for the, for the um, junior draw. So I want you to come out is this, as a circle, so really gentle lines there, and then take it in. Now, note how I'm holding my pencil again, and I'm going to change... This is just me. I can't, I need to constantly move my paper around. And then I want to get it sort of symmetrical and we'll bring it in. So that's my first shape. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. Not perfect, but absolutely fine. Right, and then we'll get up another one in here. And this one here, I'm gonna really use that shoulder here to get a nice circle. Well, this is our distance one and that's a circular one here again so think about where you want the top think about the bottom line and then taking it out just the same as the other shape slightly slightly smaller okay and same on the other side yeah, see i just have to turn the page i can't do it otherwise Okay, so that's my that's my three balloons. That's one, two, three. Now, all I'm going to do at the bottom here is go one, two, three, four. Put in, make sure that goes slightly over the edge there, and then three small lines to finish it off with a basket, and then just the same on each one. One, two. Three, four, really small basket here. I'm not even going to put a lid, uh, a sort of, uh, I can't remember the word. Elizabeth? Top? Like a top bit. There. We're just going to have it like that. Okay. And then one, two, three, four. Put the brim, brim. That's the word. There we go. And then, so that's our, our basic shapes to start with. So if you get those first basic shapes in. Right, I'm going to put some pattern in now, but I really, really want you to make this your own. So on each of them, a little flag, whatever shape you want, whatever size you want, and just a little pattern. So just for ease sake, I'm going to go really simple here. I'm going to put little simple flags. And I'm just going to go here. But you can design it in any way you want. You can have your name on it. You can have a favourite character or... Have maybe Google hot air balloons online. Find find some of them brilliant patterns that they can that you can see in them. You really don't have to go easy peasy simple like I'm doing here. I'm actually so excited to see what patterns everybody comes up with. There we go. So nice and simple, and then we'll get our flag it in at the top. Now on your little baskets, I just want you to put a few shapes, which will be the um, sandbags. I just pop those on each of them, almost like little triangles really, just make them a slightly more interesting. Okay, so you pop in your designs, take as long as you want here, just pause it and go for it with some amazing designs. Right, well, I'm just going to add 
a little bit more to my pattern. If you've finished yours, um, then that's fine. But just adding a little bit more in here. And then I'm going to put in a little um, bit of landscape at the bottom. So I'm going to go for a mountain. We live in Scotland and we have beautiful mountains here. So there we go. We'll have some, some mountains and then just some shapes for treetops. Or if you want to, you could make that a cityscape. You could have some city buildings in there, whatever you want to do. OK, now at this point, I am going to go and for the next bit, I'm going to demonstrate using some watercolour paint. But if you don't have watercolour paints, if you don't have watercolour pencils, just use your felt tips, use your crayons, use whatever you have. Make them brilliant. Post them on our Facebook page. We desperately want to see them. But if you've got watercolours or if you just want to find out how to use them, just stick with us and we're going to show you how to do a background wash. Okay, so we're going to start by doing some background washes here. So I've got a little pipette. This just makes it easier. If you don't have a pipette, all you need to do is just look. It takes a bit longer, that's all. Is go into the water like that. I'm just filling half the palette. And I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make three watercolour washes. What I thought I'd do here is create an evening sky. So here's my little palette. It's a really um, very limited palette, but to, to me it's absolutely everything I need. I'm going to start here with some alizarin crimson so you can see I'm loading my brush plenty of colour. Now the more paint I add the darker it will become and the more water I add the lighter it will become. That is the watercolour rule. So I've made an alizarin crimson wash there and now I'm going to just get that nice and damp and I'm going to make a yellow ochre wash as well. This is These are two of my favourite colours. So anyone who comes to little art school will be so familiar with alizarin crimson and yellow ochre because we've just used it constantly. One of my very first students, Rowan, who started at Little Art School right at the beginning, used to say this was cat sick, which is charming, but I, I, I love a bit of yellow ochre. Right, I'm going to use do a third one because for these evening skies, and this is this colour. It looks orange, but it's actually called cadmium red, although this is so orange. I think it actually, no, that is just an orange. Is just an orange. Right, so I've got three washes here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper upside down. I'm going to hold it at a slight, I'm making Elizabeth really nervous here, I'm going to hold it at a slight angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, with my brush, it's wet but not really with any paint on, I'm going to go around the outside of each of the balloons. Now, I'm not really gonna, I'm not taking any notice of the flag just because I'm kind of trying to do this quickly, but if you've got more time, you could go around the outside of the flag as well. See, I'm not worried about the basket, about the, the, the bits underneath, but I am gonna go around the basket as well. So I'll go around the basket. All I'm using is, is water here. It's like I'm giving myself a sort of force field, an invisible force field around the, um, the bits that I want to use my watercolour pencils on. So there we go. So we've got plenty of water on the page now. There we go. So it's not it's not soaking at all. The key here is watercolour paper. It really is about having the correct paper, even more than the right paints. It's the water, it's the right there we go. So you can see if you look, it's not sopping wet, it's just slightly damp. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add my water and I'm going to let it just run but what you'll notice can you see this a little bit of magic it's running but it is not going onto the balloons because I've given myself that force field let's add in a bit of orange here as well I'll put a bit there an orange more than the yellow here so it'll run really a lot depending on how how you um, how you hold the paper. Okay, so we're going to go like that. I'm going to go in at the top here. I want my glorious alizarin. You see? Now, watch this. So if I drop it in, and it goes like that. Look how it's running around the edge, and it's just joining into each other. So this is the joy of watercolour. It really is like magic, I think. There we go. 
So that is going to give me, if I let that dry flat now, that is just going to give me a really interesting sunset sky in just a few minutes in watercolour. Okay, so my background wash is dry. I'm going to start, I'm right-handed, so I generally tend to start up in this top left corner and work my way down so that I don't use my hand to drag over what I've already painted. Um, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go around the outside of this balloon with oops, my pencil. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm popping the pigment on the page. So when I touch my paintbrush to it, what will happen is it will turn that to paint. I'm going to do stripes here. So if I go for a stripe and very lightly colour in, I don't need to do much colouring in, to be honest, because the heavy pigment from the outside line will just take it in. So I'll show you the difference between colouring in and not. I'll do this one a bit more coloured. What I also want is that pattern line across there. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm also going to do the flag. So if I come in now, and I'll show you that that's what it is in the bits that have been coloured in. Now, if I go here and I haven't coloured it in, it's still going to take the pigment from the edge, but it'll just be paler, can you see? And the same here. So if you want it to be darker, you'd use just use more pigment and you'd just colour it in more. I'm going to take the bit of the paint from on here and put it in my flag. And because I've got my sort of gentle brush here, I can go right to the edges of this. So it doesn't look like pencil marks, so it actually looks like paint. And when you lift your brush, you've also got a bit of paint left on it as well. Okay, so that's number one. That's our first. Right, so I'm going to have um, a bit of this dark brown here just coming in to do this, whatever they are, strings, ropes, and the little bits of the flag. And then you can either take the same brown or I'm going to use here a burnt sienna. And go around those bits. I'm not going to turn those to paint, but I will on the basket because I want to keep the idea of the, of the sandbags. But have it as paint. Yeah, you can see it's just quite... And to finish it off, I'm going to put some pale green hills in the background. Again, I'm just going to do the tops. You don't have to have hills, you could have absolutely anything. The tops there, and I'm going to have some tree tops here as well. And those I'll do a bit darker because that's the foreground, it's usually darker. And I'll just, oh, that's what happens when you don't clean your brush. There we go, I'll pretend it's a little bit of heather in the green. And don't forget to sign it. Make sure you take some pictures of your work and post it in the comments section on our Facebook page, Little Art School Scotland. We would love to see your design. We've got something a little bit special up our sleeve tomorrow, actually. My son, Henry, has requested a little bit of um, Finding Nemo. So I'm going to have a really beautiful um, turtle for you. So I hope you tune in tomorrow, anytime after 11, for the turtle lesson.